At the mention of the Wild West in the 19th century, cowboys, infamous outlaws, proficient slingers, and openly unrestricted terrain are instinctively brought to mind. Yet there are several intriguing, perhaps less fatal tales that barely made it to the spotlight. These tales are equally wild, weird, and stunning. The era of the Wild West is a time filled with unusual phenomena because of its lawlessness. What weird happenings took place in this time period? Could the Wild West be any wilder? Join us as we uncover 10 unusual events that took place in the Wild Wild West. Dirty Doves, Sex in the Wild West. When people crowded America to pursue riches in the 19th century, they marked a significant lady shortage in the guest houses. In 1850, 93% of the population in California were men, hence the women were immensely outnumbered. Although decent women in formal marriages suffered no rights, the nighttime ladies enjoyed an extensive quantity of freedom. In those days, an average worker earned an estimated monthly salary of $100, a bank cleaner earned approximately $125, but a prostitute could earn $300 and above. With such cash flow for the dirty doves, they were able to achieve new rights and freedom. The common law in economics, which states that when supply overlaps demand, the product value declines, was more pronounced when women joined the prostitution business and the dirty doves began to depreciate. Their lives were brief when they had to work through intermediaries or in specialized establishments to make sales. The hands of angry clients ended the lives of some dirty doves, whereas some of them gave in to diseases such as tuberculosis. Furthermore, their bosses neglected them to die in poverty when their looks became withered. That was how the surge for dirty doves peaked and eventually collapsed. Bank robberies myths weren't true. As opposed to its representation in Hollywood movies and dime novels, bank robberies were not rampant in the Wild West. Moreover, robbery was a crucial crime that remarkably impacted local communities in the Wild West. Matter of fact, the bank robberies documented from 1865 to 1900 were only eight in number. The most outstanding heist occurred in 1866 when the infamous Jesse James and his gang struck the Clay County Savings Association in Liberty, Missouri, from which they fled with a whopping $60,000. That was a lot of fortune right there. This courageous and prosperous heist propelled Jesse James into fame and made him a legendary figure of the Wild West. Jesse James made an exception in history, and his success story apparently buttresses the lawlessness of the era. Nonetheless, Records have it that most banks in the Wild West remained untouched by bandits. The Servant Girl Annihilator in Austin, Texas On a chilling Christmas Eve in 1885, something happened in Austin, Texas that made the entire town suffer an uncanny tragedy. Susan Hancock and Eula Phillips, two married women, were murdered. They wound up being the final unfortunate victims of the notorious serial killer popularly known as the Servant Girl Annihilator, whose case is similar to the haunting tales of Victorian London's Jack the Ripper. Coincidentally, Jack frightened the streets of London town three years after Austin's incidents. Austin's most evasive culprit, the Servant Girl Annihilator, was never captured. Austin, being a young town of about 23,000 residents in those days, had its bustling nightlife brought to a sudden end due to these incidents. Servant women all around town bolted their doors tight and kept their families indoors. Between December 30th, 1884 and December 24th, 1885, the Annihilator ended eight people's lives, seven women and one man. However, the Servant Girl Annihilator nickname was quite misleading, as only the first few victims were servant girls. Investigators could not find any leads to the hideous incidents because the murders started and ended incessantly. There were speculations and suspicions about who the murderer was, but there were no traces, so the criminal was never discovered. The Butch Bandit. Robert Leroy Parker, a young man, encountered Mike Cassidy, a guy at the ranch where he was busting his chops in 1866. To Cassidy's surprise, this little cross of paths marked the beginning of his transformation into the legendary Butch Cassidy. 
Being his mentor, Cassidy taught Parker the handling of a gun. On turning 18 years of age, Parker left for Colorado, where he carried out his first bank robbery, from which he looted a grand $20,000. Corresponding to this heist, Cassidy added Butch to his name. Moreover, he used to be a butcher that slung meat. The Wild Bunch was the name of Cassidy's gang of outlaws, which was formed by Cassidy in Wyoming. Harry Longabore, popularly known as the Sundance Kid, was a remarkable member of the gang. The crew embarked on a robbing spree across the Southwest in the late 1890s. On one of these sprees, they snagged $70,000 from a train in New Mexico. Through all these, the Pinkerton detectives kept a watch on the gang. Cassidy and the Sundance Kid daringly escaped to Bolivia in the early 1900s. It was rumored that the notorious duo died in a fiery shootout, but in the absence of concrete evidence, the aftermath of the Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid stays a rousing mystery. Curious Afterlives and Alien Tale Elmer McCurdy, one of the numerous outlaws of the Wild West era, died in a failed train robbery in 1911, but he was not buried. Rather, his body was embalmed with some arsenic solution that turned him into a curious sideshow attraction. People bought, sold, and showcased Elmer's corpse in several places for over 60 years. Furthermore, a puzzling report emerged from California about crossing paths with tall, slender aliens in 1896. These extraterrestrials allegedly attempted kidnapping human beings, but their abduction plans failed, probably due to their seeming underestimation of human weight. The certainty of this story remains unknown, but it provides an insight into the extent of craziness that possibly trailed the rugged landscapes of the Wild West. The Unsung Heroic Cowboys of the West Though the Wild West era is commonly associated with gun-slinging cowboys, there were some unrecognized heroes in the era as well. A group of African-American cowboys was renowned, with Bill Pickett as the most remarkable member of the group. More than being a cowboy, Pickett was a rodeo sensation, and he invented the bold technique known as bulldogging or steer wrestling. He would sink his teeth into a cow's lips before agilely overthrowing it backward. Audiences were always awed by this spectacle. Sadly, white rivals often overshadowed the legacies of these African-American cowboys. Despite hugely contributing, many black cowboys bore the brunt of being overlooked. Driving cattle and playing a huge role in fashioning the Wild West, the black cowboys worked relentlessly along the Chisholm Trail. Also playing a vital role in transforming the Wild West were the Chinese. Irrespective of the discrimination, the Chinese individuals fearlessly worked hard to tackle the transcontinental railroad under some extremely risky conditions. The third and last heroes to be mentioned are the extraordinary women of the Wild West. Keen entrepreneurs, landowners, and genuine pathfinders are what could aptly describe the ladies. Fearlessly, they conducted businesses, led community initiatives, and made their marks in a less welcoming environment. The Camel Corps, America's desert experiment. The scorching sun and harsh climate created an alluring sight of a desert, as the American Southwest comprised broad expanses of arid landscapes. In the mid-19th century, camels were experimentally implemented into the U.S. military, and it was called the Camel Corps. The Camel Corps occurred during a period of westward expansion and exploration when settlers ventured into deserts of the Southwest in the 1850s. Due to the harsh terrain and extreme weather, traditional means of transport proved abortive. Secretary of War, Jefferson Davis, who later became the president of the Confederate States, recognized the need for an unorthodox solution, and he proposed that camels be imported. Davis believed that camels, being native to desert areas such as the Middle East and North Africa, were more adapted to tolerate the harsh conditions of the American desert. Impressively, Davis managed to persuade the U.S. Congress to sponsor this daring experiment. The first set of 33 camels was imported from the Middle East in 1855 by the U.S. Army. The Camel Corps experiment ended in 1857, 
after two years of running. However, camels continued playing a crucial role in the deserts of the Middle East and North Africa. Intriguingly, camels are currently still used to fight the invasion of terrorists in regions such as the Sahara Desert, highlighting the tolerance value of these remarkable animals in harsh environments. The Mysterious Disappearance of Tombstone Silver Tombstone earned its name predominantly from the mysterious vanish of Tombstone Silver and slightly from the infamous gunfight at the OK Corral. Tombstone's mines, at its climax, were popular for manufacturing silver worth millions of dollars, boasting the growth of a vibrant, promising town. Then the silver veins dried up almost unexplainably. Rumors arose. Some people rumored that a tricky gang of men were mining secretly and smuggling the silver for their exclusive gain. Others speculated that it was an old Native American curse, inferring the land demanded compensation for stolen riches, while a few circulated that subterranean water flooded the mines. Eventually, geological studies revealed the cause of the drying up, and it was stated that the underground rock layers were shifted by an earthquake, thereby displacing the silver veins. The town's success came to an unexpected end when the boom turned to bust and dreams collapsed into dust the great train robbery that wasn't. Every Wild West adventure could not have been a blast. There was an attempted train robbery that panned out to be an entire comedy show. A gang of aspiring outlaws, having heard rumors about trains that convey treasures crossing the Wild West, conspired to pull off a heist. Hilariously, the entire plan went downhill before the robbery even started. First off, the guys set up a barricade on the tracks feeling like they were all set. They later realized they didn't make an effort to check the train schedule. Then their horses suddenly absconded. As if that wasn't enough, they set their stash on fire accidentally. Awkwardly, they tried ascending aboard the train, but a toddler learning to walk was more coordinated than they were. It was too chaotic. The passengers and crew of the train had the wannabe outlaws taking to their heels when they fought back. Some of the wannabe outlaws escaped empty-handed, while others were captured. Certainly none of the supposed robbers benefited from the failed heist. The Green Horn, Easterners in the Wild West. The Old Wild West captivated the attention of people close by and far away, as it was the hub of the era. Some brave individuals from far away would occasionally visit to explore the rugged landscapes and culture of the Wild West. These visitors, from the lively cities and settled regions of the East, seemed out of place in this unrestricted land. Examples of out-of-place visitors are an ambitious entrepreneur dreaming of hitting the jackpot, a family allured by the beauty of free land, or a young man hoping for the romanticized life of a cowboy. This sort of people, full of hope and excitement, embarked on a life-changing journey because they didn't know that life in the West was not easy-peasy. That's why the term Greenhorn was coined for such naive people. With little to no knowledge of the hardship awaiting them, they arrived with their eyes beaming with dreams. One of the most legendary tales of these Greenhorns was their first encounter with a lasso. As expected, these Greenhorns would underrate the required skills. They found themselves entangled in their ropes or dragged brutally through the dusty landscape by a scary steer whenever they tried to rope cattle. Comical, or rather painful failures, were the outcomes of their attempts to ride wild, untamed horses or bucking broncos. The Greenhorns did not pay attention to the look before you leap adage. These memorable Greenhorns sprinkled humor on the rugged tales of frontier life. Thank you for watching. Kindly like and subscribe to our channel for more mind-blowing videos.